Welcome back, everyone. We're diving into something pretty exciting today, something with the potential to, well, shake things up in the AI world. Oh, color me intrigued. So we've got this company, DeepSeek AI. They're not like a household name, not yet at least. <laughs> you know, not like your open AIs or Googles of the world. Right, right. But they've been quietly making some um, impressive moves in AI, particularly with their high performance models. Oh, I see, I see. And what's got everyone buzzing? Their latest creation, the R2 model. Seems like it could be a real game changer. We're going to try to un unpack this article. DeepSeek R2 AI model launch. A new challenger emerges in global AI innovation race. See what all the fuss is about. Okay, yeah, sounds interesting. So what are we looking at here? What is this R2, some kind of super AI? Well, from what the article suggests, it looks like we're talking about a large language model, an LLM. Okay, so like uh, similar to ChatGPT. Yeah, that's the idea, but potentially with some pretty significant advancements. Okay, an LLM. But there are tons of those topping up left and right. So what makes this one, you know, special? What's the big deal? Ah, that's the question, isn't it? The article kind of zeroes in on four areas where R2 might really stand out. Performance, for one. Okay, performance. What does that actually mean, like, in the world of AI? Well, think of it this way. R2 could be capable of things that current AI just, well can't do, like understanding natural language like almost perfectly, or writing complex code super fast and super accurately. Wow, okay. So not just doing things better, but doing like totally new things. Potentially, yeah. Of course, you know, got to see the proof in the pudding, so to speak, need to see the actual evidence, but even the speculation is pretty, uh, pretty exciting. Definitely. So what about this efficiency thing the article keeps mentioning? Is that about like saving energy or something? Efficiency is more about uh, doing more with less. Imagine R2 processing information much faster, using less computing power than current models. That would be huge, especially for making AI more accessible to, well, everyone. So you're saying, if the rumors are true, I could run a powerful AI on my phone without, you know, melting it down. That's the general idea. The article talks about this technique called mixture of experts. Different parts of the AI model activate for different tasks, kind of like a team of specialists. Gotcha, gotcha. So instead of the whole AI engine running full blast all the time, it only uses what it needs, like, for that particular moment. Precisely. Okay, starting to get the picture. What about these specialized capabilities they mentioned? What kind of special skills are we talking about here? Well, DeepSeek already has a strong background in AI for um, generating code, so it's natural to think R2 might take that even further. Interesting. So for someone like me who can barely, like, write a simple Hello World program, R2 could be my personal coding whiz. It could certainly help streamline the software development process, but the article also hinted at R2 being tailored for other things, you know, like scientific research or financial analysis, a whole range of possibilities. Wow. Okay, before we get too carried away, got to remember, right, a lot of this is still speculation based on what we're reading in the article. We got to wait for DeepSeek to spill the beans. Yeah. You know, give us the real details. Absolutely. It's all educated guesses at this point. But even these early hints suggest R2 could really shake things up in the AI world. And it's not just about the tech itself, is it? I mean, there's this whole global context to consider. This article frames the launch of R2 as, like, this big deal in the whole AI race. DeepSeek potentially challenging the big players. And that's a crucial point. You know, the U.S. has historically been the uh, the front runner in AI development, but China's been catching up fast. And DeepSeek being, you know, a Chinese company adds another layer to this whole thing. So it's not just about a new AI. It's about like a potential shift in who's leading the charge in AI globally. What does all this mean for, well, someone like me or listeners who might not be, you know, deep in the tech world? It means the landscape of innovation is changing, right? The advancements we see in AI, they're going to be driven by a more diverse set of players, which is, well, it's exciting, could lead to faster progress. But it also brings up some big questions about how these technologies are developed and controlled. Good point. And the article touches on something that's really at the heart of this, the whole open source versus closed source debate. Will DeepSeek, you know, follow the lead of a lot of U.S. companies and keep R2 secrets under wraps? Or will they go the open route, allowing more collaboration, more people getting their hands on the technology? That's the million dollar question. The choice they make will have a huge impact on, well, on the entire AI community in the world, really. So just to kind of recap, We've got this potentially groundbreaking AI R2 from a Chinese company, DeepSeek. They're pushing the limits of what's possible with AI, and that could really change the game in the global tech world.
We've talked about the potential for uh, better performance, more efficiency, and all those specialized capabilities. But, you know, it's important to remember we're still waiting for the concrete details. Part of what makes this so fascinating is, well, the mystery surrounding R2. It definitely adds to the intrigue. Now, I'm kind of itching to dig into some of those specific innovations they hinted at. The article mentioned some pretty cool things, and I want to kind of unpack those a little more. Let's delve into those details, and I think you'll find them quite interesting. One thing that really caught my eye is uh, the talk about R2's training data. The data used to train an AI, it's it's education, right? right? Makes sense. Like the difference between learning from a like a beat up old textbook versus having access to this giant, you know, up to date library. Exactly. And it seems like DeepSeek might be giving R2 a pretty exceptional education. The article talks about them using multilingual data, like on a scale we haven't really seen before. Multilingual. OK, so R2 could be fluent in, in like a bunch of different languages. Yeah. More than just a bunch. Imagine like dozens, maybe even hundreds of languages. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. But I've seen AI demos that can translate languages, you know. What makes R2 different? Is it just the number of languages it can handle? It's not just about quantity, it's about quality too. It's not just basic translation. We're talking about an AI that might understand the nuances of different languages, the cultural context, the humor, even slang. Okay, so R2 could like get a joke told in Mandarin, translate it accurately, and even explain why it's funny to someone who only speaks English. That's the idea. That's wild. So what could that kind of uh, language skill do in the real world? Think about it. Businesses could communicate with like customers and partners all over the world seamlessly. Researchers could access information from all sorts of sources without language being a barrier. It'd be like having a universal translator that actually works. Not like those clunky things you see in sci-fi movies. Yeah. Okay, what else about this training day? The article mentioned something called um, model quantization, which oh, yes. sounded uh, pretty technical. Model quantization. It's a pretty fascinating technique. Think of it like taking a really big file, like a huge video file, and compressing it without losing any of the quality. So smaller file size, but same great content. Mm -hmm. How does that work with AI? If DeepSeek's figured out how to apply model quantization to R2, it means they could potentially make it way smaller and more efficient without sacrificing its, you know, its power. Wait, so instead of needing a whole, like, server farm to run R2, you could run it on, say, a phone. That's the potential. That would be huge. But how do you, like, compress an AI? It involves some pretty complex math. Essentially, they're finding ways to represent the AI's information using fewer bits without losing the essential data. Okay, I think I'm getting the gist of it. So smaller, more efficient AI models mean like a whole new world of possibilities, especially for accessibility. If R2 lives up to the hype, it can be the thing that finally brings powerful AI to like everyone. It's definitely a possibility. Of course, we'll have to wait and see what DeepSeek actually reveals. But these hints about model quantization and all, it shows they're really pushing the envelope. So they're pushing the boundaries with R2. Yeah. But what about like the bigger picture? What do you see coming down the pipeline for AI in general? Are we just at the beginning of this whole thing? I think we're at a really interesting point in AI development. R2 is just one example of the incredible progress that's happening. We're seeing all these advancements in hardware, software, and data all converging to fuel this like this wave of innovation. Okay, paint me a picture. What kind of mind-blowing AI stuff is coming our way? One area that I'm particularly excited about is uh, is multimodal AI. Imagine AI that can understand the world not just through text, but through images, sounds, even sensory data. Whoa. So instead of just talking to my AI, I could show it a picture, play it a song, or even like let it feel the texture of something. Exactly. We're Very talking cool. about AI that processes information from multiple senses, just like humans do. Okay, now that is cool. What kind of things could we do with that? The possibilities are, well, vast. Let's take healthcare. Imagine AI analyzing medical images, patient records, even real-time sensor data all at once. So way more accurate diagnoses and like personalized treatments? Exactly. What about for like creative stuff? Could you have AI that helps musicians write music or helps artists create, you know, amazing art? Absolutely. This kind of AI could usher in a whole new era of collaboration between humans and machines. Imagine AI amplifying our creativity, helping us solve problems in ways we never even thought of before. That's mind-blowing. But practically speaking, wouldn't processing all that data from different senses take a ton of computing power? That's where another trend comes in, edge AI. 
It's all about moving the processing power away from those giant cloud servers and bringing it closer to the devices where the data is being created. So my phone would have its own little AI brain instead of constantly sending data to the cloud. Exactly. Edge AI would mean faster responses, more privacy, and AI that can work even without a good internet connection. Makes a lot of sense. So we've got multimodal AI, expanding what AI can understand, and then edge AI, making it more accessible and powerful. Sounds like the future of AI is all about, like, breaking down barriers, making this technology more and more a part of our lives. That's a great way to put it. But there's another side to this we need to talk about. As AI gets more powerful and more common, it raises some big questions about transparency and accountability. Right. I mean, we don't want to just blindly trust these systems, especially if they're making important decisions that affect our lives. We need to know how they work how they're coming to their conclusions. Exactly. And that's why there's so much focus on explainable AI or XAI. Okay. Explainable AI. Break that down for me. What is that exactly? It's all about building AI systems that can actually tell us why they made a certain decision. So it's not just a black box spitting out an answer. It's like it can have a conversation with us, help us understand its reasoning. Right. Explainable AI is essential for building trust and making sure these systems are used responsibly. It seems like that would be especially important in fields like you know, healthcare or finance, areas where the stakes are high and people need to know why certain decisions are being made? Absolutely. In those areas, transparency is paramount. Well, it sounds like the future of AI is going to be quite the ride. Lots of incredible advancements, but some important things to consider along the way. It certainly will be. And, you know, the launch of DeepSeek's R2 is just the beginning of this whole exciting adventure. Speaking of R2, let's bring it back to the focus of this deep dive and uh, recap what we've learned. We've covered a lot of ground from the potential of this specific AI model to the bigger trends shaping the future of this whole field. What are the big takeaways for our listener today? Okay, let's see. We started with DeepSeek, this um, this company that's been kind of flying under the radar. Their new AI, this R2 thing, is making waves because it could like seriously shake things up, especially because it's coming from, you know, not one of the usual Silicon Valley giants. Yeah, and the fact that DeepSeek's based in China, that adds a whole other layer to this, you know, kind of a shift in the global AI landscape. Right. We've been digging into that article, trying to figure out what makes R2 so different. It could be way more powerful and efficient than the AI we have now. Plus, it could be designed for specific jobs, which, you know, opens up a ton of possibilities. We talked about how R2 could be this amazing multilingual AI, understanding and talking in tons of languages, like really getting the nuances. Yeah, that was mind blowing. And we got into some of the uh, the technical stuff, like mixture of experts and model quantization. I'm not going to lie, some of that went over my head, but the main thing is DeepSeek is really innovating here. Definitely. But it's not just about R2 itself. We also talked about the bigger trends in AI, like multimodal AI, which can understand the world through like all our senses, and edge AI, which puts AI right on our devices. That's huge. And then there's explainable AI, the uh, the XAI thing. As AI gets more powerful, we need to make sure we can understand how it's making decisions. Right. We need to be able to trust it. So why should our listeners care about this new AI and this uh, this company they've probably never even heard of? What's the big takeaway here? I think it shows that the world of AI is, well, it's changing fast. It's not just a few big companies calling the shots anymore. There are new players, new ideas, and that's really exciting. And for everyday people, that means the benefits of AI, you know, things like personalized experiences or like breakthroughs in medicine, those things are becoming more and more real. We're entering a whole new era of AI, one that's um, more inclusive and potentially more impactful than ever before. That's pretty amazing to think about. Uh -huh. But we've got to be realistic, right? Any powerful technology comes with, you know, potential downsides. Absolutely. That's why it's so important to talk about responsible AI. You know, we have to think about the ethical side of things and make sure these technologies are used to well, make the world a better place. It's a delicate balance, harnessing the power of AI while making sure we're using it for good. And that's where informed people like you come in. The more you understand about AI, the more you can help shape its future in a positive way. That's a great point. We all need to be part of this conversation. Exactly. This whole deep dive, it wasn't just about, you know, one new AI model. It was about looking at the bigger picture and getting people thinking about the future of AI and, and their role in it. Well, we covered a lot today, but it's really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to AI. So 
to our listeners, I'd say keep learning, keep asking questions because the future of AI is being written right now and, uh, and we all have a part to play in it.